Hey everybody. Hello. Hope you're doing well. Consider some lead-in music. That's not a bad idea. Yeah, we typically I mean we do all that for the the live shows as you know, the freebie live stuff. Um yeah, I should probably <laughs> should probably do something like that. Uh for the uh the Wednesday streams too. Not a bad idea. <clears throat> Let me set up my monitors real quick. Audio is good. Thanks, Wabbit. How's everybody doing out there? You know, and also, uh, Wabbit, I, I do not listen to Genesis as much as I should. Uh, was was Phil Collins doing a lot of metric modulation? I wouldn't doubt it. Dude was a beast. Still is. As as much of a fan of Phil Collins as I am, I really should listen to more Genesis. <coughs> also, for anyone out there, well, real quick, excuse me. Okay, now that my throat is somewhat cleared, uh, for anyone out there, what we are going to work on today, go over today, demonstrate today, works on any drum machine or groove box, whatever, that lets you work in triplets, okay? This is not Deluge specific. Um, the only thing, the only reason we're using the deluge today is because you can toggle between triplets view very easily just with the push of a button. <laughs> Instead of saying first, <laughs> now you say audio is good. Is that the cool thing that we're all doing? I appreciate it. Hey, Dallas House Music is here. I haven't seen you in a while. How's it going? And I'm so sorry my monitor is away. I don't want to butcher your name. <clears throat> Wheelie? Is that how you say your name? Fecto? Sorry if I butchered that. Nice to have you here as well. Uh, today, I just want to go over kind of the basics of uh metric modulation and, and yes because the deluge is awesome indeed but this will work on any groove box any drum machine that lets you use triplets um so if you don't know what metric modulation is um it's actually today technically what we're doing is implied metric modulation <clears throat> perfectly said nice nailed it <laughs> um now Modulation, of course, we're all familiar with. It's the changing of basically parameters, right? Um, whoops. <laughs> um, so in this case, we're talking about metric uh, or or specifically the tempo. Um, so it's changing the the tempo, uh, modulating the tempo in the song. Um, and we're talking about implied metric modulation. So we're not actually going to change the tempo, but we're going to trick our listener into thinking that it is changed um, and then change back. So it's really cool. Uh, I have not tried the Octatrack Dallas House music. I don't really know too much about it. Um, I, <laughs> I do, uh, <laughs> I do love my uh, model cycles, but I wasn't a big fan of the syntax. So I'm not sure as a European, I appreciate you're not doing Imperial modulation. <laughs> Yep, metric modulation today. <laughs> I wondered if anyone would make that joke. Um, so we got the deluge. Um, we're going to switch to a kit track here. Um, just a super basic drum kit. Our tempo today is at 120 BPM, since I'm sure that's a tempo we've all worked at before. Um, let's go ahead and just throw down a very basic drum groove, okay? So... We're going to go over at the bottom row here. These are going to be the kick drums, okay? Middle row is the snare drum. And then this third row here, or second row is the snare drum. Third row will be the hi-hat. So um, we're going to go, and then these are our, our steps. So 16 steps on step one, kick drum. On step five, uh, snare drum, sorry. Step nine, kick drum. Step 13, snare drum. Then we're going to go eighth notes across the way on our hi-hat. 
So one and two and three and four and just like that. When I hit play, hopefully that's easy enough to follow. I'm also gonna turn the click on here. All right, we all good? Everybody following along? You can rock out to this. <laughs> there we go, okay, cool. So at its most basic form, metric modulation is just fitting a different number of hits or, or count beats basically in the same tempo um, that we're currently at. So with our tempo right here, there's our four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, our four beats. We're gonna go ahead and try to fit six beats into that. Does that make sense? So this would uh, be known technically as a quarter note triplet. So if we're right here, two, three, four, our quarter note triplet's going to be... <laughs> I keep hitting pads. Uh... One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. That pulse hasn't changed. And this is a super, super complicated uh, and complex technique um so don't feel bad if you don't get it i just want to go over the basics of it and show off uh how the deluge can make it quite easy to figure out so let's go ahead and insert uh some quarter note triplets in here now luckily this kit i have selected here which is just the default one has this shaker sound that is actually pretty close to the hi-hat here so we're going to put it in but we're going to put it in in triplets view so while this appears to just get rid of um, the fourth step on each beat, so one E and duh, and then the duh is off, it's actually not doing that. Um, it's changing the spacing between the notes for us. See how it skips that? The timeline is actually moving, the playhead's moving at a different time. It's moving a little slower, see, and then it skips that note. Um, so if we go ahead and grab this shaker here, I'm still going to put it in like it's an eighth note. So our eighth note's here. We just skipped every other row. So I'm going to do that here on triplets for you. So skip this one. Now this one doesn't count. So we skip this one, put it here. Skip. This one doesn't count. There we go. See, we've got six notes in here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And if we take off the click here, actually, let's let's leave the click in. Let's mute the snare drum and the kick drum. And let's mute the hi-hat. Now... That's that exact pattern I was snapping. Where the shaker's here, hi-hat's here. Hear that? Now check out what happens if we turn off the click. Do you know where beat one is? Do you know where the downbeat is? I'm curious if anyone knows where the downbeat is here. How are you feeling this pulse? There's your downbeat. But it's totally normal if you started feeling it like this. That's totally normal. In fact, that's what we're going to use to perform this implied metric modulation. 
Is anybody completely lost? <laughs> I guess would be my question here. Left hand <laughs> looked like Kermit talking. Hey, Galactic Tapes is here. Glad you could take a break from working on your live set to join us. <laughs> um, yeah, just want to make sure everybody's following along. So let's turn the click back on. <laughs> Turn the click on. Now the 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 kick drum is actually on beats one and three. One, three, one, three, one, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Is this making sense here? Polymeter is, I always have such a hard time explaining polymeter. They are similar. They are similar, but there, uh, there, there are differences. I don't know if I want to get that deep into it today. <laughs> um, but there, there are a few differences there. When I changed the downbeat, you felt like the shaker was hitting twice per downbeat. To you, this sounds strange. Just wait. It's going to get even stranger. And also keep in mind it um I mean we're on a sequencer, so a, a little bit of humanization goes a long way here to make this even groovier once we get into the real like mind effort stuff. Um but Galactic Tapes just brought out a very good point. It does sound like 3 4 when we count it like this. Sounds like it's a waltz. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Again, because we wanted to fit six uh, notes or six counts into four, four, right? So there's our six notes right there fit perfectly. So they line up on the downbeat with four, four. <laughs> Whoop, I meant to do that. There you go. This is a very important pattern to hear in your head, specifically the shaker part. <laughs> Excuse me. So the idea with the six notes is that they need to line up with the downbeat every time. Um, so it doesn't have to be six notes technically, but as you'll see where we're going here in just a minute, <clears throat> um, this is just the simplest way to do it. But no, uh, they, they don't technically have to be there. Uh, it's all about the feel you create. Um, which speaking of that, I'm going to go ahead and take these off here. And we are going to go, and I'm going to make a new pattern here. Okay. I'm going to make it the exact same that we had. I'm just doing this so once we have this pattern complete, we can switch between them. There are a lot of African rhythms like that. Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> absolutely. And a lot of uh, Latin American beats as well, uh, or patterns. Um, yeah, definitely. Whoop, and then we'll switch to our new pattern here, which is the same. Make sure we're in it. There we go. Okay, so I'm once again going to go into triplets view with that shaker. And put it in here. Make sure I got it right. Yes, I did. Okay. So what happens when... We take out everything except that shaker with that weird feel. 
what happens when we make this, when we trick our listener into thinking that this is the new eighth note, the new pulse? One and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three. That's what it feels like, right? So I'm going to erase this hi-hat and the kick and the snare drum. And we're going to treat these like they're the new eighth notes. So um, we're going to do the same pattern we did earlier, which is a kick drum on one, then a snare drum on two which will technically line up right here if we're treating these like they're our eighth notes. Kick drum back on one. And now we'll notice we're out of room. I'm going to hit play. Just have a listen. Whoop. I'm going to hit play. There we go. Now keep in mind, our pulse is still right here. That click really comes in handy. Now, if you ask me, it's still the, the ignoring the click, this pattern still feels like it's in three and that's because it is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. It's just this, you know, this quarter note triplet thing over this 120 tempo. So I'm actually going to erase this and put it on the hi-hat. Let's go to a second measure. Let's give ourselves one more measure. Because if we see here, we go kick, snare, kick, and then it repeats. So if we look over here, we go snare, kick, or snare, off, kick snare does that make sense then we're good <clears throat> snare kick snare you know what i mean <laughs> not so good at talking here um so let's put our hi-hat in again i want to make sure i got it right there we go so we're at kick snare kick snare kick snare there we go now listen to this I'm going to turn off the click. It's a real mind effer because you start to hear this is your pulse. Not this. Switching back to that original pattern. Here we go. One, two, three. There we go. its core that is about as simple as it gets um now we can take this so many so many more places which of course i'm going to at least do a little bit for you here um an easy one is just to fill all of our hi-hat spaces in here i keep trying to click on the rows that are blurred out This is the one that really helps me out. Hearing those 16th notes, because all of a sudden the click is never naked. Now 
This is also a great pattern if you're trying to do this in reverse. Like if, if right here, if this was your proper tempo and you were trying to get uh, over the top of it, like the four, this would be a great way to do that. Hey, Cheap Noise, how's it going? The original beat is a bit Thriller-esque. I mean, it's literally, it's just the most simple, simple beat ever. Just eighth notes and kick on one and three and snare on two and four. Whoop, and then I proceed not to play it. Don't let the sounds of the, the drums, like the samples that I've chosen here, which is just a default kit, don't let that distract you from the actual rhythm being played. That's a, a very common thing I notice um, a lot um, with uh, people in the electronic music space <clears throat> is what is being played or sequenced um, tends to be overshadowed by the sounds themselves. And yes, the sounds themselves are very important and uh, definitely well, arguably more important in electronic music than the rhythms. Uh, but don't ignore what is being played, too. This is, at its core, this is the most simple drum beat there is. That's one of the first things I teach people at the drum set. And then we're down here. And remember, the pulse is the exact same. gonna switch it back to the beginning here whoop that's what I wanted now something interesting also happens with uh, this pattern that we're on right now too if we go into it And we take out the snare drum and the kick. Look at that. We're just left with eighth note triplets. All of a sudden, this is a lot easier to follow, isn't it? Just like that. Is it time to add a bass line? Actually, no, there's one more thing I want to do. Um, now, Wabbit, this is kind of what you were asking, I think. I'm going to clear this phrase here. Um, triplets view on. I'm going to still put kick, snare, or nope, sorry, we're going to start with the hi-hats, but um, I'm going to shift everything over 1 16th note to the right. What drum machine, machine slash sequencer has the uh, best swing slash shuffle function? Shuffle swing slash shuffle function. I don't really know. Um, honestly, that's not really something I look for in a piece of gear. The only one I consistently use all the time are the pocket operators and the model cycles. So that I guess <laughs> I don't know. It takes no money to have a rhythm. It takes a lot of money to have good sounds. Yeah, I guess so. Um, I don't know. I think the PO24 office has amazing sounds, and it's like 40 bucks. <laughs> well, not now. Now they're all, what, freaking 100 bucks or whatever. Bullshit. Anyway, <laughs> let's, uh, let's sequence this. So I'm going to... I'm going to shift everything over 1 16th note. So the same pattern as before. Check this out. We'll start here. So we're already doing some implied uh, modulation here. Because remember, here's our original pattern. All right, get ready. Here we go. Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> See, it can get pretty trippy. Pretty trippy. Uh, we will get to the base in just a minute. Uh, don't worry. Um, so we've got our basic pattern, our basic modulated pattern, modulated pattern with those uh, eighth note triplets that feel a lot like 16th notes at our slower tempo. Tempo? Tempo? What? And uh, then this one here, that same 16th note feel, but everything shifted one to the right. So let's, uh, let's add some bass in our, in our basic pattern here. Make a new clip. Not really a fan of any of the presets in here, but ah. how do I change my root note? I always forget. Eh, it's fine. I just won't use a scale. That's a neat sound, right? Let's put it right here for now. Uh, Anthony, mo uh, metric modulation is the changing of a tempo, basically, in a piece of music. Uh, we're doing implied metric modulation, which means our tempo, go it, it stays right here. So that click is going to stay the same. See how the drums feel like they're slower? Keep in mind, that's not like a simple halftime cut or anything like that. You can do it this way too. So yeah, that's what metric modulation is. Uh, let's play with our bass line. I'm gonna pick a real bass sound. There we go. Is that a real bass sound? Good enough. Super basic. Right, really basic. What would I pick between a Sega Genesis style? I can't speak today. Sega Genesis style groove box or a powerful granular synth? Um, both of the livens or our livens? I don't really know. Um, I have the XFM and I honestly don't use it a ton anymore just because it is so intimidating. Like it does so much. There's so much sound design potential in there, but it's like overwhelming. Um, so yeah, I don't use it a whole lot anymore. I'd probably go for the Sega Genesis style groove box because I love that era of music and I like granular synthesis is cool, but I don't, it's not really my thing. That's just me personally. 24 sounded good. Not snappy enough for what I'm after. I want I want something pretty snappy for what for how this is gonna play out. That's why I even tightened the release up here. Ha <laughs> ha 
<laughs> How crazy is that? One thing that's important to note is the kick drum and the snare drum. Listen to how the snare drum lines up with our pattern after one time through. Bop. Kick. Snare. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And again, that's because we are working with triplets. Our click is still right there. This one is super complicated. Now we're getting into like my drum set practice stuff. <laughs> Notice how the drums don't even start on the downbeat. That's because I moved everything over in this drum clip. One sixteenth. <laughs> so not only are you doing metric modulation, but you're also doing uh, like downbeat misplacement. And that's that's a whole nother thing. Um, but yeah. So that's the basics of metric modulation. Again, specifically, we are doing six over four here. Um, but there's all kinds of stuff you can do. There are some people out there that get super wild with like fivelets and that kind of stuff. But that that's that gets beyond my level of comprehension as well. Um, yeah. <laughs> And there's very few people out there doing that kind of like that crazy of stuff, but they do exist. Um, a lot of practice and a lot of just drilling that feeling into their head and a lot of natural feeling too. Um, yeah, crazy. <laughs> it, it took a long time, Wabbit, to, to get this stuff down on the drums. Um, I I got super heavy into it in like right out of high school, so like late two thousands. Um, that was like all I studied right out of high school, basically, because I was really into Prague and all that stuff. And yes, this is heavily used in Prague. Um, there's other songs. I should have had some examples. There's one song in a Pokemon game I played recently that had it actually, and it was really well done. It was super cool. Let's add an ARP. Yeah? Looking for something kind of plucky. What key are we in? I forgot. Oh, D sharp. Okay, sure. Uh, maybe that's not it. Gonna take the uh, delay off. Let's do something like that. The original Transformers song. <laughs> I feel like someone did a video on that. 
and like came to the conclusion that it was just like cut super freaking weird. Like that was never the intent to be that crazy. But yes, that is a, a wild ride of a song <laughs> if you're into odd meter stuff. Yeah, that's cool. Sure. I forgot what I played, but... Not really RP either, is it? We'll fill in these gaps here. Turn the click off. Here we go. Three, four. <laughs> so essentially what we have going on right here is we have two sets of what are perceived by the audience as 16th notes. Because we got this ARP, which are actual 16th notes to our given tempo. Then we have the hi-hat, which is modulated. Just wait till we uh, turn on these three here. <laughs> Crazy, right? It's super cool stuff, though. You can do some really neat things with it because we don't have to have our melody matched up with... Uh, I always forget how to change these. There we go. Uh, matched up with the original tempo, we can have it with the new tempo if we want. Okay, so I just grouped all of these three tracks together here. Um, let's let's get something new, but with triplets, we'll get a new bass line. <laughs> Groove Twig, you picked <laughs> the most probably awful time to join. <laughs> That's straight. If I joined the stream at this time, I would be like, this guy has no clue what the hell he's doing. What the F is going on? <laughs> yeah. yeah, crazy. <laughs> uh, what was our base? 21? Um, let's actually just copy that here and I'll delete uh, this one. There we go. Cool. So I'm going to switch to our second pattern here and I'm going to make this one purple. So it also switches and uh, we're going to mute these. Hang on, I got I got confused as to what was what. I'll say it again for you, Groove Twig. Just because you weren't here. This is a tutorial that works on any piece of gear and is not Deluge specific. The Deluge is a great piece of gear, but uh, 
This works on any drum machine or uh, groove box that lets you uh, work with triplets. <laughs> you already had already had an idea that I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah, this is like one act, one area where I'm actually I do know what I'm doing. It's very rare. It does happen from time to time. <laughs> This is what I want to mute, damn it. No, what is going on here? Okay, I want that drum pattern. Okay. Good. This needs to be cleared. Yes, there we go. Okay, so we are now working with this drum pattern, and we're on a bass track right now. Remember, our tempo is still here. but we're working with that implied metric modulation there. Um, so let's have a like maybe like a walking-ish line here. Actually, screw that. Let's get complicated with it. And let's activate this bass line. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And we're going to go two measures here so it lines up with the other one. I want to be here. Remember, it's going to feel like we're in three because... Uh, we're in our, our implied modulation, uh, which is a six over four. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. When reality, in reality, it's one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Oh, they were supposed to switch. I hit the wrong button. Here we go. Right back to it. One, two, let's switch. Same tempo. Let's displace the beat now in our modulated tempo. So see how that works? It's all about getting the feel you want by manipulating different groupings of triplets and, uh, you know, across your different instruments um, in this six over, uh, six over four feel. Um, and you can, you can just do some really incredible stuff. Jason, we are talking about implied metric modulation. Um so everything you're hearing is at uh, 120 BPM. Both of those are the exact same tempo. <laughs> Again, same tempo. I 
hit the wrong button. <laughs> I want here, and there we go. Because remember, if we start dropping stuff out, and then go into our drum pattern, we find that that pattern that felt like uh, 16th notes on the hi-hat was actually just eighth note triplets. But by changing the accent, by changing where the emphasis lies, we can really mess with our listener. Displaced downbeat. It's all about just playing these rhythms in your head, or I mean, don't do it in your head, do it on a device. Um, but in, until they just start to feel normal. And then you can really do some cool stuff. What would be the most valuable insights I would tell to someone prepping a live show? Um, you were in a few of my live shows. Oh, uh, chat. Oh, thank you. Um, your show, <laughs> your show stresses you out. Um, right now, my biggest thing is just booking a show. That's, that's where my stress lies right now. Um, my biggest piece of advice would be to remember that 99.9% .9 of the people who watch your show aren't going to remember it a week later. So that little mistake you're stressing over or that transition you don't have or the, the wrong notes you play if you're playing keys or finger drumming or the wrong parameter you adjust, no one's going to give a shit about that in honestly probably just a few hours even after you're set. So uh, go out there and, and do it, and nothing nothing makes you better at playing live than actually playing live. <laughs> but yeah, no one's going to remember your mistakes. They'll remember when you kick ass, but they won't remember your mistakes much. Unless, I mean, don't go knocking over your equipment or something mid-set. <laughs> but don't sweat the small stuff like that. That would be my advice. I'm definitely uh, someone who does a lot of that, too. Like, I'm stressing, like, which bags to take to the show and, like, the logistics of, like, going from the car to the venue right now. That's where I'm at because I want to do it all in one trip because I don't want my stuff to get stolen. Yeah, make mistakes is here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Terry, we all know that guy. <laughs> all right, back to this. Make those mistakes. That's right. I kind of want to go in. To one of these patterns here. Did I mute this one? No. Oh, God. I want this drum pattern. This one. Kind of want to go in here and apply some randomization on some of these notes. Just see how wacky we can get. Be making sure everybody that knocks over a piece of gear on stage feels awful. All I meant was, unless you're doing something that's like so 
crazy bad like yeah like knocking your whole rig over something like that no one's gonna remember it and even then even then uh people still forget that shit <laughs> you know uh the the show matters to you more than it matters to anyone unless you're like a huge 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 star which i don't know if any of us in here are that um, i am certainly not i know for a fact that groove twig is not i don't know about anybody else <laughs> If you go on stage with only an iPad, there's nothing to knock over. You can still do the epic tablet spike. <laughs> I just realized there's two pages. Hey, you called me out earlier. <laughs> All right, let's change that tempo. Hey, take care, Wheelie. Thanks for being here. Hope you had fun. A good way to end a free beat show is smash an iPad. At 49.09, I dropped a drumstick. That's probably true in one of the live shows. I've dropped a lot of drumsticks in the live shows. I always want to do these epic stick flips, but one, we're in a garage, so the ceiling's like eight feet tall. Not even. Two, it's dark as hell in there. <laughs> and I don't I don't have a third lack of drum kit drumstick catching skill, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I'm kinda digging this groove though. That's trippy. That's pretty cool. What happens if we go into the drums and mute the hi-hat? That's really where the difference lies. So there we've got eighth note triplets in the hi-hat versus the true 16th notes in the ARP. And you can hear that difference between them. That's how this is working. That's where we're finding those extra spaces to fit six notes in where we had four before. That discrepancy between those two parts, that's where the space comes from. Yeah. Oh, it's 554 already. That went fast. <clears throat> Make the rest of the show unplayable but worth it. Oh, with the awful light-up drumsticks. <laughs> If someone could make a reliable pair of those, man, I can't talk reliable pair of those. I would totally rock those in a live show. <laughs> Use air drums on one of that problem. I would love to walk on stage with like a Quest 3 and do a whole show. <laughs> like run the audio output of that to the, you know, to the front of house sit down and play VR drums. <laughs> I 
I don't know. I haven't looked. Uh, honestly, Lady Freebeat and I have a Quest 2 that I don't think either of us have touched in over a year. Are there any good drum apps? Hey, go by Mike. How's it going? You just caught the, uh, caught the tail end of the stream here. Have you tried it, Groove Twig? I would love to give that a shot. That sounds so fun. Oh, another thing I was going to say is this does work at all tempos, too. So if we crank up the tempo to 184. if we bring it down to like 88. Yeah, works at any tempo. The entire audience has quest threes. <laughs> You have drummed in VR. I would love to uh, hear your hear your experiences with that. Just join the live. You'll watch the replay. Oh, thank you. There's some fun stuff in here. What happens if you add swing? So that's another area where we can get more complex. Um, let me show you. Let's reset the tempo to 120. We'll start here. <laughs> We're only going to hear the swing in the ARP here because that's the only thing with 16th notes. Here we go. It's a good example, actually. Whoop, not record. I'm going to mute that. If we go into this drum part here, so you can hear that stutter, because we're essentially swinging triplets. I mean, that's what we are doing. You can really hear it in that hi-hat. So if we actually mute the kick and snare, yeah, it's just swinging triplets. And that's where, I don't know if you caught the uh, um, earlier part of the stream, Bad Night, um, but I mentioned uh, when, when you have a drummer doing this at a drum set and there's the humanization element, um, things can get really crazy feel wise. Um, obviously that it's just a taste of, of what that can give you. Um, it can get pretty nuts. Yeah, it's good stuff, though. Of course, you can go negative, too. We won't do that. We'll just keep it here. There we go. And with that, I do believe it is time for me to go make some dinner and enjoy a nice quiet evening with Lady Freebeat who is on spring break from both taking classes to become a teacher and also her teaching that she's also doing right now while she's taking classes to become a teacher because that makes sense 
<laughs> she has this week off. We were going to take a trip uh, down to the California Redwoods this weekend, but uh, the weather just looked too nasty, so we, we wound up canceling that last uh, minute. We were going to leave tomorrow. Um, so now I'm thinking I might redo the studio. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, hope you all had fun. Um, I love this kind of stuff. Let me know if you'd be more interested in this kind of thing, like exploring fun rhythmic stuff you can do. Um, displacement of downbeats. We got into just a hair, uh, but that's like another one of my favorite things to do. Yeah. Just, I, I really love to mess with my listener, I guess. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, thanks, everybody. Thanks for hanging out. Hope you had a good time. Uh, we'll see you Friday for the uh, main weekly video. And, yeah, have a good morning, afternoon, evening. We'll see you next time, everybody. Bye-bye.